Hello, and thanks again for tuning in to today's uh, update. Um, if you watched this update yesterday, you know that we announced uh, then that this coming Sunday, the 17th, we will be reopening our campus uh, only for worship, no small groups, no connection groups, Sunday school, uh, anything like that. Uh, we will be opening, however, uh, two worships initially, and if, as those fill, we will uh, offer a third uh, if we need to do that. But we do need you to make reservations. It's very important that you make reservations. We're asking for you to reserve your space in one of two services right now. Either the 8 a.m. service, that's different than our past 815 service, and then the 11 a.m. service. And right now, we've had a wonderful response to both of those. There, of course, still space in uh, each of those, uh, 8 a.m., 11 a.m. You say, why the gap between those services? Well, that is, we have built in time for a professional cleaning service to come in and disinfect our uh, areas of use. Only specific areas of this campus will be used. Uh, used. Other areas will be cordoned off. And, uh, but we want to give uh, the, the professor, uh, professionals time to effectively uh, disinfect our bathrooms, uh, our worship center, our preschool area, all of these areas where there will be uh, any kind of traffic and contact. And so uh, 8 a.m., 11 a.m. right now, if those two uh, fill up, then we will uh, come back and add a fourth. But right now, those two uh, our phones began ringing off the hook this morning at 9 a.m. when reservations opened. You can do it by calling us, 334-792-9406, or you can go online and you can make your reservation online. Uh, go to our homepage at www.rbcdothan.org. At the top of that page, you'll see uh, a little banner that says uh, Reopening. Uh, information and you can click on uh, the connection there it will take you to um, uh, the place where you can both read all the protocols that I went through yesterday uh, you can print that out if it's helpful to you uh, it's a couple of pages of, uh, of strategy and how we will uh, implement uh, our uh, protocols during this time uh, as well as you can go there to make your reservation for one of the two services, again, 8 a.m. or 11 uh, a.m. And uh, so rather than me try to go through all of those particulars, uh, I just remind you that we are implementing uh, uh, every conceivable protocol without restricting our ability to effectively worship. I think you'll be uh, very uh, comfortable. I had one of the administrators of one of our local hospitals uh, last night who saw the strategy and just texted me a message and said, Pastor, it's excellent um, uh, job. And so um, I think you'll feel comfortable with the protocols that we have uh, put in, in place, but I urge you to go look at those. And then uh, once you have registered for one of the two uh, AM services, let me ask you uh, to exercise all integrity and come to the service that you have registered for. They will fill up at a certain point in time. If you can't register to one, uh, in one, you will know that that service has already uh, been filled. And that filling is related to appropriate social distancing. And so when that one is full, you'll no longer be able to register for it. Uh, likewise, uh, the others. Uh, but uh, right now, we've been um, uh, uh, thrilled with the response, and we so look forward uh, to getting uh, together uh, this uh, coming Sunday. I hope you'll join us. Now, let me tell you about one other uh, option uh, as it relates to uh, this coming Sunday, and that is some people, I talked with a, one of our senior adult ladies today. She said, Pastor, she said, I, I'm just not sure I'll be there Sunday. I'm still a little nervous about it. I said, I understand that, but she said, I, I was told that it's going to be broadcast in the parking lot through an FM channel. I said, that's exactly right. She said, I think that's what I'll do. And that may be your comfort level. Uh, if that be the case, uh, join us uh, at either 8 or 11 o'clock uh, in the parking lot. You can pull in here and tune in to 88.1 uh, on your FM radio station. And you'll be able to hear the live stream and hear the, the actual service as it is taking place uh, in the worship center. And that may help you. Many people have told me, Pastor, I'd just like to come and be at the campus. 
And so we want you to feel comfortable, but we want you to reconnect with us as we uh, open up and begin this process. I've also been asked this question, what about masks? Will everybody be wearing masks? Uh, everybody will not be wearing masks, but you are welcome to wear masks. I was asked, is it okay if we wear masks? The answer is uh, absolutely. Uh, our greeters and ushers will be wearing a mask uh, for sure. And uh, we've involved some protocols that are outlined uh, in the document that we have posted online. So, uh, but if you're comfortable with a mask and you'd feel better wearing a mask, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, wear a mask and uh, join us. But again, make reservations. Well, uh, again, thank you for tuning in to today's uh, daily update. And I want to share a word or two with you. Uh, that I want to encourage you with as it relates to prayer. And it comes from the book of 1 John uh, chapter 5, and it begins in verse uh, 13. It says, uh, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this, listen, is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. These are great verses, and they relate really to a couple of things. Number one, the assurance of our salvation. John is saying to these uh, early Christians, he said, I'm writing, I want you to know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And he said, I've written this entire little letter to you to help you understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And might I add at this, at this juncture, if you don't know that you know that you know Jesus as your Savior, why don't you trust him today? I don't mean just know about him. I mean know him personally. And you know right where you are, you can take care of that. You can pray a prayer, something like this. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So you can just, uh, right where you are, you can say, Lord Jesus, I'm not sure but I want to be sure. I want to know that you are my Savior. And Lord, I invite you to come into my life right now and be my Savior, be my Lord, be my Master. Now, if you'll call out to him like that, he will hear that. And uh, he will become your Lord, Savior, and Master. He wants to be. Uh, in fact, uh, he created you to have a relationship uh, with him. And we'd love to help you uh, in that uh, relationship with Christ. If you prayed a prayer like that, why don't you let us know about your decision? Uh, you can do that. Text the word PASTOR, P-A-S-T-O-R, to this number, 334-384-8080. Text the word PASTOR to that number, 334-384-8080. If you just prayed a prayer and invited Christ to become your Savior. Let us know about that decision. We certainly want to pray with you. And uh, we have material that we would love to put in your hands. It's free and there are no strings attached, but we'd love to do that. Let us know about your decision. Well, John says he's written this, this letter to these early Christians to help them be sure that they know that Jesus Christ is their Savior. And this connects to what he goes on to say, and that is matters of prayer and having confidence in prayer. So the first thing I would say to you is knowing Christ is a prerequisite to effective prayer. Uh, it's hard to have a conversation with somebody you don't know. And so John says, I've written this to you that you may know that you know him. That's a prerequisite. It is a necessity if you're going to have a communication uh, with the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Effective prayer. The second thing he talks about in verse 14, he says, and this is a confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is the parameters of prayer. What are the parameters? It is the will of God. Uh, John says, if we ask anything that is according to his will, that is his, his perfect plan, then he hears us. Our prayer should always be seasoned by the will of God. So often we confuse this and think that God is kind of an errand boy uh, in uh, the heavenlies who waits to say, tell me what you need and I will make sure that happens. Now, God sometimes does that. But what John is saying is the parameters of prayer are really not our will, they're God's will. And so when we pray, we want to pray within the context of what God desires, what God's will is. Now you say, well, how do I get there? You get there by pray by talking with him, by staying connected with him in fellowship, in his word. And as you grow in your relationship with him, guess what? 
you'll find yourself uh, more aware of His will and you'll find yourself desiring His will even above your own will. And so that's the parameter of prayer is the will of God. And then he offers a third thing to us in verse 15. He says, and we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, and we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Listen, that's the promise of prayer. In other words, uh, when I am a follower of Christ, um, uh, that's the prerequisite, and I pray within the will of God, that's the parameter of prayer, then I can experience the promise of prayer. And that is, when I'm praying in the will of God, I will be praying for the things that God wants to do. And we have the assurance, John says, that he hears us. And so it's the reason that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed these words. He said, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. It is so important that we understand the response of God in prayer, the promise that he offers to us to hear our prayer is based on the parameter of his will. And when we're praying within his will, then we have the assurance or the promise that he will answer that prayer. Why? Because uh, when you're praying in his will, you're praying for the things he wants you praying for. And then there's a, a final thought I give you today. Not only is there the prerequisites of prayer and the parameter of prayer, there, uh, the promise of prayer, there is finally the power of prayer. That is, we know, he says, that we have the request that we have asked of him. Praying in God's will brings the promise of uh, his answer. And when we see his answer, we are experiencing the power of prayer. To be able to pray and pray in God's will, knowing he hears us, enables us to get in on the mighty hand of God working in behalf of our prayers. We get to see his power. And I want to tell you something. When you see his power that results from your prayers, it stimulates and it encourages you to pray more and more and more. Keep those things in mind today as you think about prayer. So many people uh, are praying right now, I think, more than they have in years. That's not a bad thing. And you become proficient in prayer by praying. But if you want to know how to be effective, these things that John gives us in 1 John 5, verses 13 through 15, will help you understand uh, how to pray with confidence and know that God uh, is hearing your prayer. You say, well, how can I know his will? Again, stay close to him. Again, ask him. In prayer, say, God, protect my prayers. Show me your will that I may pray in accordance with your will and help me to bend my life to your will. Well, I hope that's an encouragement to you today. It's been a joy to share it with you. Remember, go online and register for services this Sunday uh, or call our church office, uh, 792-9406. Our website is www.rbcdothan.org. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here this coming uh, Sunday, it's going to be wonderful to begin the process. It's going to be a lengthy process, I'll tell you. We know that, but we're preparing for that process. But at least we're beginning to restart. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your many cards and notes of encouragement that you've sent to our church, you've sent to our staff, you've sent to me. Uh, you don't know what that means to know that you're praying for us as we're praying for you. And so I hope you have a great uh, rest of the week. We'll see you again tomorrow. And, uh, and of course, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.